The court strikes down a law that punished nursing home staff who didn't use residents' preferred pronoun, and skilled nursing facilities recover threatened by spread of the Delta variant. This and more, next. You're watching LTC News with Dane Henning. Welcome to CNA TV Long-Term Care News. I'm Dane Henning. Today is Wednesday, August 4th, 2021. To stay in the know of Long-Term Care News, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, if you are a CNA, consider becoming a NACA member for only $30 a year. You can enroll quickly on our website at NACACNA.org. Join today and stand up for what you deserve. California nursing home staffers will no longer be faced with potential jail time or thousands of dollars in fines if they intentionally misgender or fail to use a resident's preferred name or pronouns thanks to a new ruling by an appeals court. The three to nothing decision was handed down by California's third district court of appeal and overturns a 2017 provision known as the pronoun provision that made it a crime for facilities and staff that willfully and repeatedly failed to use a resident's preferred name or pronouns after being clearly informed of the preferred names or pronouns. Providers found guilty of violating the provision faced a misdemeanor charge with the maximum punishment of $2,500 or 180 days in prison. Associate Justice Elena Duarte in, in the ruling said the provision was in violation of employees' right to free speech. Quote, we recognize that misgendering may be disrespectful, discourteous, and insulting, and used as an, an artful way to express an ideological disagreement with another person's expressed gender identity. But the First Amendment does not protect only speech that inoffensively and artfully articulates a person's point of view, she wrote. The provision was challenged by the petitioner taking offense, which is an unincorporated association that includes at least one California citizen and taxpayer. The association's attorney, David Llewellyn, argued in a statement to local media that free speech should not be subject to criminal penalties, regardless of its content. The state's attorney general, who was unhappy with the ruling, said it's reviewing the court's decision in hopes to appeal. The continued spread of the highly contagious COVID variant could mean another semi-lockdown for nursing homes just as the industry starts to rebound from last year, warned the top executive with LTC Properties. Quote, I believe our industry is on more solid footing today than it has been over the last 18 months, and I'm hopeful that some of the remaining pressures will begin to ease within the coming months, Wendy Simpson, the Real Estate Investment Trust chairman and CEO, said during a call on Friday. Quote, that said, however, a serious surge of the COVID Delta variant across the country, especially in states with lower vaccination rates among staff, could result in the need to stop admissions again temporarily and delaying a full recovery, she warned. Hopefully, any such surge will be addressed locally rather than by a national edict. Federal data showed that the country's seven-day case average reached around 67,000 new cases per day as of July 29th. The rise in cases has also worried long-term care industry stakeholders who called the next few weeks critical for aging services providers. Executives also noted that the industry's recovery had been trending in the right direction prior to the Delta variant's arrival. Simpson noted that occupancy in skilled nursing facilities has risen each week over the last 25 weeks, with the exception of one week that when census remained flat. For the quarter, the company reported its average skilled nursing facility occupancy was 69% as of mid-July. The company averaged a 68% occupancy rate in both June and March. This has been your long-term care news update. Everyone have a wonderful week, and I'll see you on Wednesday.